Hi, this is Dennis from Second Chance Tackle. Today's project is a Daiwa Fuego. It's a 6.3 to 1 uh, low profile bait casting reel with a Gamagatsu uh, aftermarket handle on it. This one belongs to Tommy and he's asked me if I could go ahead and tune this one up for him. And we're going to do that. And we're going to do that. We'll start by taking off the exterior pieces. And as we do, I'm going to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. If you have subscribed, thank you. Uh, but if you're interested in the art of reel repair, if you'd like to see how reels are serviced, and if you'd like to learn a little bit more about how they come together, who the manufacturers are, and, and the uh, way that uh, the reels operate, well, that's kind of what this channel is about. The whole idea behind the channel is to teach you to do it yourself so that you can keep your reels fishing and well, if you have one that's broken, give it a second chance. All right, we've removed the, the cap, the tie down or clamp and the screw. The handle comes off next. And as I take those pieces and parts off, they go into a parts tray. There is a spring loaded uh, star adjuster here. So the star adjuster comes off. The spring comes off. Notice both sides of the spring are the same. Then we have a little um, uh, square nut. That square nut is what's going to fit in the recess of this, and that's going to hold that down. And this is a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way if you are servicing a reel, and if you're not familiar with how the reel works, or how to uh, uh, take it apart or reassemble, well, the pictures are going to give you reference points along the way. So this is a good place to take a picture. You'll know what uh, pieces go in the stack underneath the assembly. So we have a flat washer is next. Then we have a uh, noise maker, a little click with two tension washers inside of that, and that faces up. And we have a small washer here, that's the bearing shield. And that's all you need to take off on this side before we remove that side case. Well, I'm not sure if this side case is going to come out just with these three screws or if there's another one involved. So I'm going to come over to this side of the reel. I'm going to open up the other side case. And to do that, this one's easy enough. It has a, a little spring-loaded screw on this side. And then you can push down on it. And you can pull out to remove that. On this side, you have a bearing. So while we're at it, we can go ahead and oil the bearing. I'm just going to lay that off to the side. Then I'm going to remove the spool because I wanted to check to make sure that there were no screws underneath here holding that together. We saw the bearing on the one side. There's no bearing on this side or this side. So the spool essentially is a free floating spool. That generally tells me that we'll find a bearing under this side when we remove the side plate. Okay, we can go ahead and put that back on. There's three screws, so let's take those out. Usually I can get away with doing this with a Phillips head screwdriver. In this case, probably not. I spoke too soon. And uh, let's go ahead and take these down. This is one of those machine screw kind of things. It's a flat blade, but it's also a partial um, Phillips head. Just be careful, take your time with it. Use the right screwdriver for the slot. And when you get those screws out, lay them on your table so that you can make sure that those screws are the same size. If they're not the same size, you want to note the location of the one that's bigger or smaller, shorter, fatter, whatever. And there's different reasons why manufacturers put different size screws in different places in the reel. Just don't be fooled by it when you're removing them. All right, this one just should be coming out, but for whatever reason, there you go. So those two are the same. We got one more over here. So I probably should have done some real research on this. I don't know the pricing on this as a uh, as a new reel. Iowa, for the most part, is one of uh, the brands you can trust with these low-profile baitcasters. Iowa and Shimano are certainly 
in that range. You can also find the, the loose reels and um, Abu and like. Most of them that do the bait casters will also do the low profile bait casters. All right, so that last one was longer. So that's why you put them out there. So the long screw when we go to reinstall is going to be to the front. Should be able to remove our case now. There we go. And underneath the case you're going to notice a couple of things here. One of which is that we have a gear spacer that has two steps on it. One on each side, a stud or a step. And you've got to make sure when we go to reinstall that that it seats properly into the main gear. We have an instant anti-reverse collar on this one. I'm just going to make sure that it's clean of debris and dirt. And underneath here looks to be a bearing, so we'll oil that side of the case there. Here's the face of the, the gear set then. First thing I want to do is remove these two springs, because they have a habit of jumping out and getting lost if you don't pay much attention to them. Next up, we can remove the main gear. And underneath that, there's a click ratchet here that's going to be the trip for the um, free spool. So when you push the free spool down, oh, we just shut that up, that's okay, we took the springs out. You're going to notice that that arm comes in, and when you push or you turn, it's going to push it back. We're going to remove that. And then there's two screws that can be accessed through the window here. That's going to be holding the gear stud on on this side. So let me take my I want to use a micro driver for this. You need to match your, your tips here so that you can get these out. Kind of reminds me of some of the older spinning wheels where they use that as a way to do this. Okay, I'm just going to leave them there and then we should be able to pull a whole assembly out to get to this back uh, bearing. You want to oil that. Once that's oiled, <laughs> just make sure it's clean back here. And you can go ahead and put that right back in. Mesh the, the gears like that. And you want to align your window so that you can put those screws back in. And then go ahead and get those screws set up for reinstall. I'm going to use just a little bit of dab of grease to hold that screw to the screwdriver so that I can aim it and reinstall. If that grease is enough to hold the second one or not. Yep, we're good. This was just a little bit out of a line there. It's being a little stubborn. So use your pick to line it up. Be patient. Don't force anything. Make sure that you get this down the right way. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of penetrating oil here. There's just a little bit of dried grease up top here on the assembly. We'll use some penetrating oil and a Q-tip that will clean that up. I want to oil the slide here for your trip mechanism. And we'll oil into the groove here. Check your yoke now, you're going to notice on the yoke that there's a ramp that's right here. That ramp is going to face backwards so that it seats properly. And then the side of the pinion gear with the cross it slots cut in it, and that's going to go to the spool side. So we're going to check the teeth that they all look nice and Uniform, they're not bent or anything. The performance on the reel was fine before we started. 
but if you had noticed any roughness, you would certainly want to address it by replacing the part if that was the case. Okay, we want to get the shoulders facing inward. This is your slot for your gear, and we're just going to lay that right in there. And seat the pinion gear into the rack as such. You'll notice that there's a nice tight line there for the ramp. Next up then, we want to just pull the back washer off. That can go on. You don't oil those plastic drive gears there. They're self-lubricating. Clean out your inside of your main gear. Check the teeth on the main gear. Get your grease brush back. So if you can do this reel, you can do most bait casting reels, uh, low profile especially. They all seem to follow a similar pattern. They're, they're a little bit different and they're a lot of bit the same. All right, let's mount that main gear in. You want to pull out your pinion gear so that that works well. This appears to be a carbon tex washer. Just make sure it's clean and that you can see the cross hatching. If you don't have uh, good definition on the cross hatching, what you want to do is go get the uh, a hard bristle brush, kind of wipe it out and clear out the old grease. Very thick washer here that goes on next. And remember what we said about oops, and we said an oops there, didn't we? We didn't set our trip mechanism in place. That's the one that goes in first. And that's the, the advantage of using a parts tray like I did. So let's do this again. And take the click ratchet first. And you need to make sure the orientation is correct. Those points need to accept this piece from here. Now we can go ahead and put that red washer on. And then we can load our main gear and our cap washer. Load it in with that, and now we're in good condition. All right, find the two studs and make sure that they seat properly so that there is no gap to that finished washer there. Go back into your tray then and get the two springs that go on that post. And be careful with them again. If you lose them, well, it's nightmarish. So these are return springs when you put your uh, assembly into free spool. These are going to return with the trap mechanism. We've cleaned the back of the case, we've oiled the bearing, we've cleaned the uh, anti-reverse. All we need to do now is center this and press down to make sure that it aligns properly and that it holds tight to the case. That bearing came out, that's okay. We can oil that bearing while we're at it. Probably was just kind of screaming for that anyway. Find the long screw, that's the one that goes on this side of the case. And we can go ahead and uh, just tighten up this side. These reels are good. He, this one belongs to Tommy. Tommy does an awful lot of saltwater fishing. And this one is not exactly the saltwater class of low profile bait casters, but it's becoming more and more popular these days, uh, especially here in the North Atlantic, to use these low profile reels in the salt water. Of course, in the, the Bay Shore in the New York Harbor area, it's, uh, it's almost replicating a lake. They're not that deep, and uh, they have a lot of activity. So uh, you can generally get away with something like this. But if you get the big pelagics coming in on these, of course, it's just going to tear that right up. And we do get them from time to time. All right, that's the second one. Tighten that all the way down. Get the third one. So my guess is this is a, a medium-priced reel, maybe a light-value reel. We, it only has the few bearings that we saw in there. The spool doesn't have the bearings on it. It has the bearings anchored in the side plates. And uh, I would guess I would call it a, uh, a, 
a basic reel. There's nothing fancy going on here with anything. But again, if you're uh, light duty fishing, you can certainly uh, do everything you need. All right, we've had that bearing soaking now. Let's go ahead and put that bearing back on. Then we just want to remember the way that we set that up. The first thing after that bearing is that little bearing shield washer. And we have the noise maker with one of the tension washers in there. Here's your second tension washer goes on next. Then your flat washer goes on. Sometimes it's kind of stuck to that uh, adjuster. Then we have the square nut, and uh, notice that there's a race inside this one. That's what faces up to hold the other spring. We'll tighten that down by hand as much as we can. You can also use a wrench if you want to, to tighten it down that way. So while I'm doing this, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, if you want to leave that question in the comment section, I will try, I will try to help you get unstuck if I know the answer. Maybe you're looking for a parts supplier or something to a reel that you're working on. Uh, if I know where to help you find the parts, I'll let you know. The spring goes on next. It seats in that brace. Now we take our star adjuster and we press down on that and we make sure that we seat on that square nut. Again, this is an aftermarket handle. This is a Gamagatsu handle. They're very good. And then we'll just set the nut cap here. Okay, just finished tightening down the, the hold fast, tightening down the screw. That's your right hand side. So bring this over now. Let's go service the pole. Bring this over to the side. We want a screwdriver now to remove the pole cap. This is plastic. Be careful with it. Generally speaking, if you just bump it a couple of times, you're able to, to dislodge that. pliers. Pull your pawl out to check to make sure that it's clean. Check your shoulders. Check the points. If it's alright, you can go reinstall. I like to put a little bit of oil onto the shaft for the worm and into the carrier. Let's go reseat the pawl now. When I reseat the pawl, I like to start with that. Turn your reel until you feel that the pawl is, is headed down to seat properly. It should be flush with that carrier. We'll go ahead and put the cap back on. When you go to put the cap back on, please make sure that it's going on square. If it doesn't go on square, you risk it breaking. And this one is not going on square, so you just have to be careful when you do this. And it's tight, tight spaces, but patience will prevail. Okay, that's that. And you can give it a turn. This one happens to drive by the main gear, which is nice because when you go to cast this reel, that will disengage. So you should be able to throw it further. We'll talk a little bit in a moment about how to do that, but you should be able to cast this reel further. A little bit of grease onto both sides of the, the spool shaft. I'm holding that braid because that braid tends to trap inside the wheel if you're not careful. And it did trap, but I've done that enough times now to know how to do that. We have our race on the back. We've oiled our bearing. We bring this one down, seat it, and bring it up. And tighten this screw. And that's the service of this reel. So let's talk a moment about casting this before we put this one away. So when you're going for your free spool, you're noticing that that line guide does not move. That's because the drive side is what's doing it. When you cast, you always want to center your line guide first and then 
set the free spool. That means that you're, when you're casting, it's got the least amount of travel to get out of the, uh, the line guide there. So you want to center that, and that'll ensure the furthest cast that you can make with this reel. Well, there you go. This one works nicely. We're going to tighten it down, check the drag, and once you do that, back it off for storage. You don't want to leave the drag compressed. And uh, very nice reel overall. This is the Daiwa Fuego. It's a low-profile baitcaster reel with an aftermarket Gamagatsu handle on it. And uh, that's how you take it apart, how you service it, and put it back together again. To all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do to keep us safe. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.